Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So, so right now in the metagame, Loki is a hugely prevalent force, showing up in about 30% of decks, which is an honestly crazy number. Uh, and it can definitely be a card that many players find frustrating to play against. So if you're looking for a silver bullet to help you out in the Loki-filled meta, uh, I think we might have one here in Discard. So what I've noticed in playing a bunch of Discard over the last few days is that Loki just does not use the Discard cards nearly as effectively as you do. This has always been one of the weaker aspects of Loki is playing these hyper synergistic decks where if he gets the wrong pieces, he just doesn't really do a whole lot. And that just works out very well for discard in my experience. This also includes Loki in Arsham. I faced a lot of Arsham gamers with this list and you do have to be mindful about those snaps and retreats, namely because discard really does try and go all in with its big apocalypse plan. So some of the games, naturally, you're not going to get your ultimate payoff and the deck isn't going to be as crazy as when you do, but as long as you're making sure not to lose big cubes on those games and try and maximize the big cubes you can get when your deck does its thing, this deck I think should do very well against Loki. I ran into almost nothing but Loki and Arshams with Loki the other day on stream while grinding out some conquest, and this deck just absolutely overperformed at taking big cubes from them, even netting me a nice little infinity ticket. In general, the game plan for discard is super duper simple. You're just trying to discard your apocalypse, discard your swarm, discard your proxima, and get good value out of your cards. Moon Knight has been a great addition to this deck, giving us another flexible three drop that discards the things we want to discard, uh, and at the same time, potentially ripping a key card from an opponent's hand. I've also really liked Strong Guy in the three cost slot. He's very consistently a three nine, which is just great stats for cost. Uh, and he's just kind of reliable in that you always know how much power he's going to be putting out. Some players prefer to run stuff like Gambit in that slot, and I think that's a fine card to play as well. Uh, but I value Strong Guy because there is just remarkable consistency there, whereas something like Gambit or Corvus Glaive, uh, there's a bit more RNG to it. The number one question I get about discard when I post this list usually is, can you replace Meek and or Proxima? Uh, unfortunately, with Proxima, I do not think there is a suitable replacement for Proxima. You could just throw in another discard card if you want, and I mean, the deck is probably still playable, but uh, there's no denying that Proxima is just a huge boost to the power output, uh, given that she's essentially a 0-7 most of the time. Meek, on the other hand, is rather replaceable. Uh, I do think if you have him, you should be playing him, but if you don't have him, I think there are some reasonable options you can try out here. The simplest replacement option here is definitely Nebula, just giving yourself another one drop to play on turn one. Seems good, gets value, helps pump up kind of in a similar way as Meek, but isn't quite as flexible uh, and is a bit weaker to things like Kitty Pride. And some other cards you could consider in that spot are something like Wolverine as just another free body on the board from discarding or Dakin or Silver Samurai. Other than that, the deck is very straightforward. If you've played Discard at all in the past, this plays very similarly uh, as previous iterations of the deck. Uh, the most thing to be mindful of, though, is where you are putting your Dracula, because that's generally going to be your biggest power output, uh, as well as how you're positioning your units for things like Proxima, uh, so you can more reasonably predict or sometimes change where Proxima is going to fall, as that extra 7 power can take people by surprise and sometimes just win you the game. If you're missing both Meek and Proxima, another thing you could try here is going the Collector Helicarrier route. I've never been a super big fan of that version, but I have seen people do well with it. So uh, if you're a Helicarrier enjoyer, that is another thing you could consider for this style of deck. But yeah, this worked really well for me, so I figured I'd share it because I think Loki is one of the things to beat right now, and Discard has kind of been the best deck for me in doing so. Also, huge shout out to everyone for supporting the recent videos I've been doing, both the Snap History stuff, uh, the news videos, all that kind of stuff. The support has been really awesome. I greatly appreciate it. Those are definitely the kind of videos I want to make the focus of my channel, but I do like putting up gameplay every once in a while, maybe like once a week, because I think it's just a fun thing to do, uh, even if it's not really the main direction I want to take my channel going forward compared to the new content I'm doing.
But yeah, that's the deck. Got some games with it here. If you want to grab the code, I'll have that linked below in the video description. Let me know what you think about it and how your experience has been with it versus Loki in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. But we're going to get right on into the gameplay footage. And if you enjoy this type of content, remember to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Two packs. Wow. Uh, so we know next to nothing about it other than it's its own thing. It's not like... It's not like just a port of like the current Pokemon uh, trading card game. Uh, it's mobile focused. It's going to be available worldwide and it's apparently coming out sometime this year. I have no idea if I'm going to cover content on it or not, but I might. If I do, I will probably relegate it to the side channel just because YouTube algorithm stuff. But if enough snap people are interested, it could be main channel stuff. I don't know. We'll have to see. Pokemon Snap, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the YouTube algo can be very fickle first. Hell yeah, the surfing video is actually doing really well. I'm super proud of that. Because sometimes... You spend a lot of time and work on something and then it doesn't pay off and it feels so bad. That's definitely happened to me a few times. Um, but this is not one of those times. Feels good, man. I'm actually going to snap them back because Loki getting discard cards is not very good. <laughs> it's also silver, so who gives a shit, right? Yeah, I did. I did. I did indeed say to tell Safety Blade, aka Lockjaw's number one fan, about your uh, idea there. I think Thena's still worth 6k. I do. I think if you want to play Thena decks, uh, there's not a better card to get for them, right? Like, she kind of is a. Uh, core part of what makes her archetype work. Do do do. Taste six of waiting for her. God, that's got to be so annoying. Nice Eliad nerd. Yeah, and to all the Loki running around, I feel like Discard's actually one of the better decks because, like, Loki just has such an awkward time because they don't get enough of the synergy in hand at once to really pop off. It's, like, actually in a pretty good spot right now, and I'm really happy about it because Discard's a sweet archetype. I'm... I'm always happy when discard is fairly viable. <sighs> the Arsham player's brain is short circuiting right now because they can't compute that they played Loki Quinjet and are probably going to lose. Just missing Meek. You can you can get by without Meek for sure. I'll just throw in like a Nebula or something. Oh, bro! If I actually end up dying to it, still. 
I didn't, but it was close. <laughs> Jesus. Victory. Twenty-four K. All right. Respectable. Took seventeen months off. Yeah, that'll do it. A lot of Arsham today, huh? <laughs> whole lot of Arsham today. 24k almost on the dot. Yeah, I, I found a lot of content creators are in like the, the 20 to 30k range. 19k, Vincent's beta wave season, only really buying the pass. That's solid. At what collection level should I start my YouTube channel? Well... That's a tough question to answer. There's probably no guaranteed correct answer there. You could try it early and see if people value the new player experience. Do, 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 do. Making a YouTube channel for tax evasion purposes. It's the best reason to make a YouTube channel. Yeah, these locations aren't great. <laughs> These little guys may not have every card, but we surprise the fuck out of you with our pool of three cards. Yeah. It's, you never know what people are cooking sometimes. I should actually leave the make. Oh, come on, bro. That's cheating. Bro's cheating. I guess I can move my Dracula, though. I never see a Tuma coming. I was considering the Lady Deathstrike bundle, but decided to buy Black Myth Wukong instead. Just watch out for those, uh, those creator policies. <laughs> Be careful you don't accidentally say anything about feminism, or they'll come for you. <laughs> that, that's been a very funny thing to watch from the wayside. Why play Jane there? I have no idea. No, I guess. Oh wait, I should leave a card. For the Dracula, I guess? Does it matter? Yeah, it, it was just a very weird thing they did. I don't really understand why they did that. I don't know, though. Some companies are weird. I guess I do this, so I discard with the Dracula, and then it pumps the Morbius and the Meek. Dracula, Meek, Blade. What? Cool. Yeah, I have, I, you know, I think they played Jane here because they wanted to draw the zero cost cards with Loki, I guess. And they couldn't do that here and she died in either lane, but that's weird, weird play. <sighs> they probably would have beat me if they just played her on the left. And they just leave. Okay. I'm very okay with that.
What's up, Sandy Rage? So let's see what's on the docket for today. We've got the podcast in a little over an hour. So we'll raid into the podcast and we'll do some uh, snap yapping. What are drop rewards for tomorrow? Oh, do drops start tomorrow? The drop rewards are actually sick. It's the storm with Jeff. Pretty pumped about that one. As a certified enjoyer of all things Jeff. Does that mean the Jeff League starts this week too? Is that correct? Yeah, Jeff Week is pretty cool. Zavu was indeed insane. I'm looking forward to doing the Savage Lands history. That'll be a fun one. Artem Zola is legitimately the worst six drop here. Unlucky. At least they didn't get a six drop though. How do you play? How do I play Snap without seeing Arsham or Loki? As soon as I figure that one out, I'll get back to you. Blindfolded? That's probably the only correct answer. Death Wave history when? We will probably talk about Death Wave after the Zabu season. Um, because that basically Death Wave was like one of the best, and then Surfer pushed it out. And then Zabu kept it pushed out, and then it came back when uh, when that changed, when they finally nerfed those cards. High breaks, easy eight. Hog. Why not Zola the Modoc? That is a good point, actually. <laughs> that is a very good point. I should have Zola the Modoc. So for the most part, for the history videos, I'm gonna try and keep things in sequential order, but there are going to be uh, a few times where we go back before, uh, where things are at, where I started things was Surfer. The first of those will probably be Nexus events. So I'm probably going to start writing the script for Nexus events and for Zabu this week. I have no idea what the cadence is going to end up being on the videos, but um, I'll I'll do my best to get them out there. They do take a lot longer to make, though, than the normal videos. Migrated from YouTube. Welcome. Yeah, Twitch chat is generally more active than YouTube. Why didn't they get a buff from Aunt Maze? Oh, they played the kitty for that, didn't they? Copycat is a swarm.
He is reborn. Small card. That's that's good. Ultron for you, bro. Sorry. Apollo G's. Oh, and we get Dracula. Nuts. The absolute nuts. It is indeed looking rough for him. Turns out discard is actually rather good against all the Lokis. Who knew? Maybe that's a good video topic. Because uh, I know a lot of people are, are annoyed with all the Loki going on. Yeah, Proxima is real, real nice in discard. She was probably the best discard card we've gotten in quite some time. I'm also so happy they gave Apocalypse's power back. Snap there. If they they should have snapped before they showed the second Cassandra. Got to get that value before your opponent like knows. They played Meek too. Mike played Meek. The Magneto is actually annoying because it means you might not discard Apocalypse. Yeah, they're playing Arsham. A lot of Arsham gamers today, unsurprisingly. You think I'm stuck here? I can just move it. Bum, 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 bum. Brother, I can just move it. Well, that's a shame. I am Iron Man. <sighs> he is Iron Man. snap him back it's risky Goliath shits on our existence chat I'm sad I'm a sad man Still winnable. We win. Let's fucking go, dude. The Iron Man was scary. I am born. 
do 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 Victory. Shout out Proxima for that one. Arsham players do be crazy sometimes. Look at that Bob. He's a blastin'. Loki. All right, where is Apocalypse? That's what I'm looking for. All right, well, it's good we didn't have Apocalypse in hand. <laughs> now we just need to draw him. Nope, we got Goon Knight. Do, 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 do. That is a deranged MODOK, I think, if you ask me. Oh, cool. We did the funny thing. We did the very humorous thing and are probably going to win the game now. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So we had 12 here, which is enough to win here. I'm going to play it like this. Oh, no, they can't have a random thing to buff power because uh, they were playing our deck, so we don't actually have to do that. Let's just make sure I didn't fuck up the math. 6 and 6 is 12. 12 and 18 is 30. Easy clap. Apocalypse. We saw a lot of Lokis and we murdered them all. Feels good, man. Victory. Uh, do you think do you think Gambit is better than Strong Guy in this? Um Gambit's fine, but I do think Strong Guy is more consistent. So when you also the other thing about Strong Guy is you can play him down and not have to worry about him discarding the wrong thing, which is what I like about it. Um, if you're more into the the chaos and the RNG though, or if you just like Gambit and want to play him, I think it's fine to play him. But I think Strong Guy is better for being able to more consistently understand how your outcome of power is going to go. 